y'all niggas better listen to my daddy's podcast. Let's do it. Yeah. Welcome to the Smokers Lounge 420 Podcast, the best podcast in the world. This is episode number 23. This is podcasting from a real nigga perspective. Now make sure you comment, like, subscribe, share, and follow us on all social media. Now right now I need you to light you up something, pour you a drink, and let's vibe, God damn it! You can now get us on your smart speaker. Just say, okay, Alexa or Google, play the Smokers Lounge 420 podcast, and voila, we'll be right in your face. Shout out to the Coming Right Up Network. You can catch our show on there every Saturday at 8.30 a.m. Shout out to them, goddammit. But, um, so you know. Now is about the time that I like to get into something a little inspirational, motivational. So today's inspirational words of the day is... The man who has confidence in himself gains the confidence of others. Once again, I said, the man who has confidence in himself gains the confidence of others. And that's a stated proverb. So what I take that to mean is that if you have confidence in yourself, I mean, everybody's going to see that. It's going to show. So by you having confidence in yourself, other people are going to be like, well, this nigga's kind of confident, so... Uh, I'm confident in myself so I mean if you don't believe in yourself no one will so I just want to say that the man who has confidence in himself gains the confidence of others god damn it that's by a, well that's not by nobody that's a, a stated proverb god damn it so we're going to definitely 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 smoke on for that god damn it so um you know now was about the time that I usually break in uh Prez Miller but um He's out of town this week on some business, so um, never fear, never fear. You know, um, we got a we got a we got a fan favorite in the building. God damn it, um, she wasn't on the show a couple weeks ago. People was asking where she's at, so you know. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna bring in one of the most tallest, loveliest, sexiest ladies that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. K Dub, God damn it. Yo, 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 Smokers Lounge, what up? What's going on with you, K-Dub, goddammit? Hey, I'm chilling. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be summer out here. Yes. Trying yes. to get my summer body before summer is here. Okay, well, uh, how, how's that coming? Uh, I think it's coming good, but we're going to see when I get in a bikini. <laughs> okay, goddammit. Okay, okay. So besides that, what's good with you? Um, yeah, I'm just chilling. What about you? Shit, I mean, I'm okay. I got a little brown in my cup, um, a little disappointed, I mean, because the plug, you know, usually we on that loudy rally, I mean, the, the plug done brought over some mediocre, so we on some mediocre today, so we trying to get right, goddammit, but besides that, you know, I can't complain, I mean, I, I'm a smoke one, because at least I'm smoking, goddammit, so, um, I said, you got one over there, so we're going to see if I can beat you today, you know, because usually, usually you crush me, and I had a head start, so we'll see, goddammit. But um, let's get let's let's get right into the show, goddamn it, air to the streets. So um, I don't know if you heard about um, Laquisha. <laughs> That's a new film about a white man pretending to be a black woman to get a radio job. I mean, I haven't se- I, there might be some previews out. I haven't seen them, but just off the just off of the title of me hearing that, I will have to say that's a hell no no go for me. What about you? Yeah, I agree. I mean, first of all, like, come on. Just the name, LaQuisha, like, okay, so you picked the most ratchet, ghetto shit that you could find on Google. Alright. And I'm actually just looking at the cover of it, and I'm just so appalled. Like, this is not... I haven't seen the cover. What's... Uh, enlighten us what's on the cover, just in case people out there haven't seen it either. 
So it basically looks like a black female, and this is a dark skinned female by the way, um, a black female's head is like cut in half on two sides of this clueless looking white guy. I mean, I don't know. Everything that I see is is saying that it's racist. <laughs> now, let, now let me ask so. you this, because white people are, are trying to compare this. I don't know if you saw Joanna Man, um, white chicks. They're trying to say that this is like white chicks. So if, if this is racist, then white chicks was racist. So uh, how do you feel about that right there? Well, I mean, all I have to say to that is black people can't be racist. So, you know what? I'll, I'll light one up for that. Statistically, black people can't be racist. Is it the same thing? Um, no, no, black people can definitely be prejudiced. Yes, they can be bigots, they can be prejudiced, but racist means thinking you, you have the supreme race. No black person in America could believe that our race is above any, uh, above white race. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. So, me personally, <laughs> I don't know, like, white chicks, okay, yeah, I'm a fan of white chicks, Joanna, man, okay, that was a black man playing a black woman, so that's not even the same fucking thing, so people shouldn't even bring that up into it, um, as far as white chicks go, I don't know, um, I don't feel like, I don't feel that they were being racist, okay, um, yeah, there might have been some white stereotypes in there, but is that racist? Mm, I don't know, so, I'm not gonna go see the movie, I might check out the fucking I might check out the preview, I mean like the little, um, whatever that, whatever that's called, the little preview or whatever, but no, nah, hell no, nah. so, if y'all want to go see it out there, people, let us know, because we don't support, uh, LaQuisha over here, goddammit. So, um, Rolling Loud was last weekend. Now, um, you're a big festival person. I had never heard of this, and I didn't even know what was going on. Have, what, were you familiar with Rolling Loud or heard about it before? I have heard of Rolling Loud. It's not on my list, but, I mean, yeah, I, I can say that I've heard of it. Okay, okay, well, well, I guess it went down this week. Um, I guess, niggas, some rapper got killed. I never heard of him, so I, I, I didn't want to say his name. Rest in peace to him. But I guess, um, niggas were shooting that NBA young boy, and, it, and they hit his lady and shit. Now my thing is, okay, if some nigga is shooting at me, and they happen to shoot my lady, like that's total disrespect. That's total disrespect. Right. You feel me? So I mean, I don't know. Like, it's always the black events that there's niggas shooting. Like, Garber Brooks is in town tomorrow. Okay. Um, there's gonna be seventy-five thousand people at Hinesville tomorrow. How many people you think is gonna get shot? Probably zero. And. Rolling loud. I don't know how many people was there, but there could be a hundred black people in a in a club together and somebody might get fucking shot. I mean that's it's fucking sad, but it's how it is. Yeah, that's super unfortunate. You know, but um Little Wayne was there and shit, so and I guess they were trying to search him, so he, he canceled his performance. Um so you gotta let me know. Do you think that's petty of him to cancel the performance because he was getting searched or nigga should be searched no matter his job? Talk I mean, to us. I mean, it just depends on why they were searching him, like if you're searching him because you actually think that he's gonna start shooting, then that's stupid. Right. If you're searching him because you want to make it look like you're doing everything that you can to make the festival safe, then, uh, I mean, but I don't think, like, if they were gonna search him, I don't think anything should have been confiscated. Okay, here's my here's my take on it. First of all, if something goes down, I'm pretty sure that Lil Wayne is not going to be a shooter. He's not going to be one shooting. Like I don't know him personally. I'm just thinking. So if you want to search his entourage, make sure they don't have no guns on him. Okay, maybe, maybe. Okay, whatever. Um, but my thing is, if if Lil Wayne didn't want to get searched because he had weed on him, like you have the festival is called Rolling Loud. Right. So what do you expect? And even if it's not called Rolling Loud, like. You already know what kind of artist that you're getting in Little Wayne. You know this man's before every fucking song. You hear the lighter. You have to. You know this man smokes. So, to, so, to, so to invite him there and not want him to smoke. Okay. Now, 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 my other thing is that every artist gets searched. 
Because if every artist got searched, well then, okay. Right. You might just have to follow the rule, but if you just are searching who you want to search, I'm not with that bullshit. You feel me? Right, and they invited him. So exactly. Like, if you didn't want him to bring what he wants to bring and do what he wants to do, then don't invite him. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, we ain't going to spend too much time on that, but that's Rolling Loud. So, uh, people, if you want to go to Rolling Loud, just be careful because niggas is getting shot. Like, we only covered two shootings, but there was actually like four shootings after Rolling Loud and shit. And Weezy didn't come. Now, let me ask you this. Um, I don't know if you've seen Weezy perform before. I've seen Weezy perform four times, but if you were going to Rolling Loud and Lil Wayne canceled his set, are you big mad or little mad? I'm big, big mad because I don't know 99% of the rest of the people who are going to be there. Point fucking taken. Point fucking taken. God damn it. Okay, well, while we're talking about rappers um, getting shot out and shit, Yo Gotti's tour bus got shot out in Memphis. Well, it was in Tennessee. Well, it wasn't in Memphis, but still, you would think God, you would think God is good in goddamn Memphis and shit. Right. Tennessee, you know what I mean? So he wasn't on the bus. I mean, thank God, you know. Um, this isn't even in the news, but why and if Lucci, his bus got shot at too? Like it was, it was a bad week for rappers. Um, they've said that third. You no, know, they said seven rappers have been shot at or shot since Nipsey Hussle passed away. Now my thing is. This is the only genre, genre of music that does that. You know, like, why can't rappers put the fucking guns down? Like, let me ask you this. You're a rapper and you're on. Is there anything serious enough for you to risk your popularity and your money for some bullshit? No. Like, unless somebody is doing bodily harm to me first, there's no words that you can say that are going to make me risk at all. Right. Just none. Like, I don't care what the fuck you say. I don't care if it's not true. I don't care if it is true. Right. So, I mean, hopefully Yo Gotti, you know what I mean, can tighten it up. Hopefully it wasn't Young Dolph, because you know those niggas had some beef, goddammit. Speaking of, speaking of, um, I had just talked about MC. So, I'm going to segue into this. Um, The Nipsey store, um, Marathon, has made 10 million since he's passed away and shit. So, I definitely got a slight one up. For Nipsey, like ten million dollars. Like that's dope as fuck, yo. Like that's big as hell. So I hope, I hope that's going, going out to his um, to his family. Well, it's definitely going to his family and shit. And um, DJ Khaled just released a single, his first single from his new CD had has Nipsey and John Legend on. It. I don't know if you heard it. Mm, I didn't. I just heard it right before the show, and um, they actually dropped a video today for it. Nipsey's in it, and um. DJ Khaled said he's donating 100% of the proceeds to Nipsey's children and shit. So, you know, definitely got a smoke one for that, goddammit. Did you fuck with the song? Oh, the song? Well, you know. Oh, that's uh, another story. No. Nah, <laughs> you know, um, I was actually listening to it when I, when I had my kids in the car, and um, my youngest daughter said it, that it sounds like church rap. Um, so. I thought about it, because she don't know there's actually like church rap. It does. John Legend's saying some inspirational shit, you know what I mean, like the devil's a lie. Mm. And then Nipsey's talking that shit, that grown man shit. So, I mean, it's inspirational. Um, I only heard it once, so it's not my jam yet. But mm. you know you know how they're going through that song. You know DJ Khaled gets the fucking... Um, today on Our Radio, every Our Radio station in America was playing that song on top of the hour every hour and shit. Oh, wow. So yeah, I got I got a big one up for Nipsey, big one up for Khaled and shit. God damn it! Now, this this was big on social media this week. Um, an unarmed pregnant black woman was killed by the police. Um, so from what I read, she took the police's taser and was trying to tase him, or maybe she did tase him, and then the cop opened up not once, not twice, not three, but five shots, killed the woman. Um, off rip, everybody's like, well, comply or die, she was attacking the cop, blah, 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 like. Oh, well, you know, Blue Lives Matter is always going to come out the woodwork. Right. Like, no matter what happens. Every time. So, um, I don't know how I feel. Did he, uh, like, it's so crazy, because if, 
if you take the cop's taser, okay, that's one thing. But you didn't have the gun, so you only had the taser. So do you have to? And and it's like, and, and they're saying that she had mental problems. So my thing is, even if she's trying to tase you, is that justified to kill her? You feel me? Like like how you feel about that? I mean, that's a tough one. First of all, though, I would just have to say that I want to know how this escalated. Like, why did she go for the stun gun in the first place? Um, I am having a hard time thinking of a scenario where I would try to grab an officer's weapon of any kind. Right. Whether it's a nightstick, their gun, like... I don't want to be that close to a cop that I would try to reach for it. Right. And I, I just think that that's really an ignorant thing to do. I mean, I don't want to be bad on the dead, but to try to take a cop's weapon, right, especially as a black person, is like a really dumb move. Um. So I'll first have to say that, but just at the end of the day. It's tricky how rules for civilians are different than for cops. Like, if you try to come at a cop, you're always wrong. Right. No matter if the cop was right. Like, it's not like me and you fighting in the street. Like, no matter what happened, they're always right. So, in that aspect, then, I mean, I guess, you know, they may be able to justify them killing her, but just in my mind... I don't think you need more than one shot if you needed to take a shot. <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's like, I, I literally seen a white guy jump on, a, on top of a cop car, kick off the flashers, kick out both the front window and back window. Yeah, he didn't pull no taser, but this nigga didn't even get it, like, this nigga didn't even get tased or nothing, so I don't know. Like, the lady's pregnant. Right. She had mental problems. Like I said, I don't want... I'm not going to spend too much time on it, like, it's just something to think about. If it was a white lady, and she was pregnant, would she end up dead, you mm-hmm. know? So, I guess we're just going to leave it, leave it right there and shit. Now, now, this next, now, this next story, it's not, it's not funny, but I just wonder how this happened. So, a five-year-old brought two dozen vials of crack cocaine to a church preschool. Now... First of all, how does a five-year-old even know what that is? Why are you bagging, why are you cooking crack in front of a five-year-old, and why do you have your crack <laughs> that's accessible to a, five, to a five-year-old, you feel me? All of those things, I agree. Like, I don't, I just don't understand it. And, uh, I don't know, the, the parents have been arrested, as, as they should, but, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, I, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, what kind of parent you have to be that they have that shit around your five-year-old. Right, and to the point where he thought it was so awesome that he took some to school, like, show and tell. Right. Like, oh, I got this fucking rock right here, guys. Exactly. You want to see? Like... And that one, the nigga took 24 vows of crack to school. Right. 24 fucking vows. So, I, I mean... Should I be surprised this happened in Philly? I would like to say yes. It's an unfortunate situation at the end of the day. Like, we gotta do better. Oh, that's what this happened out of Philly? Mm-hmm. Okay, see, you know, you know me. I just really got the title and shit, God damn it. But, um, yeah, so we definitely gotta do better as a community. Keep the drugs away from your kids. I mean, I didn't even know niggas was really selling crack like that in 2019, but I guess there's still crackheads, so we just gonna leave it at that. Now, this nigga Lord Jamar, I don't know if y'all know who, um, Lord, Lord Jamar is. Do you know who Lord Jamar is? I <laughs> do not. <laughs> <laughs> um, it sounds like a character from Mortal Kombat. Lord Jamar? Yes. Okay. He was, he was in a group in the early 90s. Matter of fact, hold on, because I know the group that this nigga was in, but, you know, we, even though I'm on this fucking mid, mid grade or whatever it's called, uh, I'm still, I'm still feeling this. Let me see exactly what fucking group this nigga was in. But anyway, this nigga said that Eminem 
Yeah, he, he said he was nice, but he said black people don't listen to Eminem. So before we even go anywhere else, what do you think about that statement? I think that I missed the poll where we decided Lord Jamar speaks for all black people. Ah, ah. I, I missed that. I, I didn't get to vote, so we need to redo. Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay, and, and he was in—he was in brand Nubian people. I don't even know if you know what that is, K. Dub, because I'm not—I might know one—I might know one, one or two songs, but I'm not really too familiar with Grand Nubian. But what I will say about Eminem, um, if we had a top lyricist list, which we will have eventually, um, I would probably put Eminem number one on my top lyricist list because he can rap. Okay, yes. But I kind of feel Lord Jamar a little bit because he was trying to say that even though he could, he's good with words and good with metaphors, his his content isn't always saying shit, you know. And he was saying black people don't relate to all doing all the pills and killing their mom and killing their girlfriend. Okay, I agree, but I can't really relate to him as 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 I can relate to Jeezy. Yeah, Jeezy doesn't rap as good, but I just relate to his songs more. So I'm not gonna say that black people don't listen to him because. I'm sure they do, but I've never, I've never really heard of him at the club. I've never heard a nigga say, "I'm about to go jam this new M." Mm. What about you? Like, like when when M's dropping, are are you in a hurry to go jam that shit? Well, I mean, I think it's different for me because I don't identify with any drug dealing or drug taking. <laughs> So if you're rapping about OxyContin or crack, I don't relate to either of those things. So to say that Eminem doesn't have the same point of point of view as me, hundred percent agree. That doesn't mean I don't listen to him. Okay. Like I listen to songs that I can't relate to, like. I will listen to Jeezy and pretend that I have ten keys and I'm this super awesome drug dealer with ten bitches in my fucking Porsche coupe outside the club or something <laughs> when I'm working out. But but I'm not like Jeezy in most ways, you know what I mean? So I guess it's different for me, but I I, I fuck with them. So, I mean, like Rap God, like his his singles, but I haven't jammed the whole Eminem album since the second one. And just because I don't jam it, don't mean it's not nice. Um, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. Like I feel Lord Jamar a little bit. He was also saying that Eminem was only so nice because he's white. He said if a black guy had the same skills as him, he would just be an average nigga. But since M is white, it's like oh, this white guy is really is really so nice and he was trying to say that um also that his white privilege helps him sell all these records because um white people love when white people do black people's art um he gave the example of Elvis every song that Elvis did was mostly jacked from black people you know uh, M's not jacking songs literally but he's he's in our culture so my other question is do you think that hip hop is Eminem's house um Lord Jamar was saying that Eminem is a visitor in Hip Hop's house. What do you think before we get off of this? We ain't gonna spend too much time on him because I'll fuck with him. Yeah, I think M has influenced other artists, so no, I don't think he's a guest. Um, I mean, that's like saying Larry Bird is only good because he's white. Like, both of them are talented. Um, I'm definitely not one who loves culture vultures. Completely the opposite. I fucking hate all of that shit. Um, but to say that Eminem's not not one of the greats, like, no, I I can't agree with that. I agree. I, I agree with that too. So we we ain't gonna we ain't gonna spend too much time on him and Lord Jamar, goddammit. But before we go to the other guy, damn it, and I, and I finished my point before you big up, god damn it. Big up, big up, big up to me, <laughs> god damn it. But um, before we continue the show, god damn it, make sure y'all check out the 
thing, old snap mother bleep shirt, you know what I mean? Make sure you check that out and shit, god damn it. You know, got the repping the Lakers, you know, even though there's a lot of bullshit, I'm still still repping my team, god damn it. But um so Steve Harvey, this nigga lost two jobs in a week. Um he was a he was the uh, host of NBC's Little Big Shot. He's being replaced by Melissa McCarthy. Do you know who that is? I do, and I'm not a fan. Okay, <laughs> I don't I don't even know who that is. So I'm not even gonna light one up for her. And so when NBC replaced, um, well, well, first they had actually um <laughs> cut off his talking show, Steve. And they replaced that um, with a show that's going to be coming out in September by Kelly Clarkson. Mm. So this nigga got replaced by Kelly fucking Clarkson <laughs> and Melissa McCarthy. You know, so uh, Uncle Steve had a bad fucking week. I mean, he's still doing, he's still doing um, Family Feud and Celebrity Family Feud. But goddamn, Steve, you know. And um, on top of that, um, Lee Daniels on um, his show Empire. You know, they um. This is, this is the last season, number six. Um, they said Jesse, whatever his name, they said they have the option to bring him back, but right now they're not bringing him back. So the funny thing about that is, is um, that was Steve Harvey lost his job. Empire is a Lee Daniels show. Um, Monique had had beef with both of these niggas over, over the Netflix shit. So, I mean, I don't know if it's karma and shit, but I've never watched an episode of Empire. Not one. Mm -hmm. No, um... I fuck with I fuck with my I fuck with Terrence Howard, Mr. Maine. You know, what up, Maine? You know, I fuck with him and I even fuck with Taraji, but from the beginning of that show, it reminded me of one of my favorite movies too much, Hustle and Flow. So I was like, I'm not watching this because this reminds me of Hustle and Flow too much. So I never I never I never watched the episode, goddammit. So that that's ending six seasons. So if you're an Empire fan out there, goddammit, make sure y'all tune in to the last season and shit, goddammit. Now, they don't call her Queen B, B for nothing, goddammit. Um, the numbers are in. Beyonce's Netflix documentary it, um, reached a whopping 1.1 million U.S. views. And, and um, so it, it did its thing. And that's, um, that was from the Nelson um, Variety Reports. I mean, she did, she, she did a million in the first week. Um, we watched that shit. Are you surprised by the numbers? No, I'm not surprised. And they said up seventy percent of the viewership. Damn, did my lighter this down? Y'all see this bullshit? People, my lighter this down on camera. But you know, I'm prepared. I got another one. But they said seventy percent of the viewers are women. Mm. That's not surprising either. It's not. You know, I fuck with it. I mean, we talked about it. You said you liked it. A, you said you liked it a little. So we'll leave it at that. Goddamn it. Um, but this is only one of her three specials and shit. You know, so big up to her. And while we're talking about B. I also heard today, this ain't even in the notes, that um, she had, she had performed a um, concert for Uber, um, a few concerts, and they were going to give her $6 million. She said, no, just give me equity. Um, so that equity is now $9 million in, in, the, in the company. She said, so we're going to let one up for B for doing that. Now, um, here's, the part of the, here's the part of the air to the streets that um, if you've been on any social media this week, You've seen this going on. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about fucking abortions. Um, k up if I got the states wrong, um, so I think it was Texas, right? Texas is passed a bill. No, I'm sorry, it's Alabama. Alabama um, passed a bill that if doctors do abortions, they can get life in prison. Is, is, is that what's going on with Alabama and shit? Um, for Alabama, they were passing a bill that was banning abortion, um, and would make abortion a felony for doctors. Okay. Now, what do you, what do you think about that? Well, hold on. Before you even go there, so there's a, there's a so that one is banning it, and then Missouri is trying to pass some shit where after eight weeks, in a heartbeat, um, can't do it then. And I think Ohio's trying to do the same thing. So, what's your stance on abortion? Um, my stance on abortion is that it's 
super fucking terrible that it's even a discussion, that it's even a topic, that it's even a thing. Um, it's essentially the killing of a baby when you just talk about it in layman's terms because there's so many technicalities and extenuating circumstances that you could bring into it. Um, so first of all, it's just fucking sad that we have to talk about it, but to be honest, like, the way I grew up was Baptist, so, you know, abortion was a, this is, is a horrible sin, and just not even an option, um, but after seeing cases where 12 year olds are being raped and having babies, and you know, just, just the fact that at this point I feel like a woman should be able to decide. Now, it's up to that woman to make the best decision that she can, but I do think that it should be her choice. Okay, um, I guess I, this is so tough for me because I, I feel so many ways I feel so many ways about this shit. It's like, um, I was, I was raised, I was raised Christian in the church. My granddad passed, my grandmother passed, so yeah, of course, they were, they were pro-life. Um, I was, I was pro-life for the longest. Not to say that I'm pro-choice now, but it's like now I understand that sometimes shit happens where you might have to get an abortion, like incest, rape, shit like that. Even though I, I believe that no matter the circumstance of an abortion, I believe it's murder. Like, you can't tell me, like, it's not murder, like, because you're killing a human. So I I believe it's murder. So um, I don't think abortion should be used as birth control. Because when you, when you, when you lay down with somebody, you know the consequences. I believe there should be a, a limit on the amount of abortion that you can have. Mm-hmm. Um, because you, you're not getting raped all these times for abortions. You know, like, like all these abortions that you're having is an incest and rape. At some point, you're just being irresponsible if you're having multiple abortions. Right. Um, now, this is where it gets a little tricky for me. Yet. So, a woman's body, a woman's choice. Do I agree with that? Yes, it's a woman's body, a woman's choice. Now, the only time where I, I disagree at is, even though it's a woman's body, a woman's choice, um, for instance, if I was having a baby with somebody and they wanted to have an abortion, um, and I did. So, yeah, it's the woman's body, woman's choice. But that baby inside that woman is just not the woman's baby, though. Right. That's my baby, too. And my thing is, if she wants to have a baby and the man doesn't, she still has the baby. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to have a baby. He's on child support for 18 years. He wants the baby, she doesn't, he kills it. So yes, it's your body, your choice, but at some point, like if the dad wants the baby, like, I don't know, like I don't I'm not saying she be able to stop her from getting a, a, an abortion, but what I'm what I, what I, all I'm saying is it's just not her baby though. Like it's her body, her choice, but that's not only her baby to kill though, because it takes two people to make a baby. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how I feel about if a, if a lady wants to have an abortion, but the dad doesn't though, because like I don't, I don't think you should be able to stop the woman from having one, but I don't think you should just be able to kill a nigga's baby, though. Right. So, I don't, I don't know if that makes me pro-life or pro-choice. You feel me? So, that's really how I feel about it. Now, I don't feel old white men should be able to just make up rules for women. Now, what I think, I think it's more than just abortions. Um, I think at the end of the day, what it comes down to is. In the year 2045, white people are supposed to be the minority. Mexicans are supposed to be the majority of the country. What are they doing right now? They're trying to keep all the Mexicans out. So with that being said, all these states that they're passing all these abortion laws, Alabama, Missouri, uh, even Texas, it's mostly white people. So if you're stopping white people from having abortions, you know what you're doing? You're make you're, you're you're keeping their population alive. So hopefully you're trying to like protect. It's like self 
perseverance. You don't you don't want to become a minority and shit. Mm-hmm. So I think it, I think it's I think it's way more than this white man trying to tell women what to do. I think there's like an, an agenda behind it and shit. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So because there's far more pressing matters like the national debt, right, and <laughs> poverty and hunger that laws could be being passed for, and yet we're trying to police what people do with really the only thing they have control over, which is yourself. Exactly. And just because you ban abortions, abortions aren't going to stop. I hate to say it. So now what you're doing is you're, you're taking safe, legal abortions and making chicks have unsafe, illegal abortions. Mm-hmm. And and then on top of that, if somebody doesn't want to be a parent, you can't, I don't think you should force somebody to be a parent that doesn't want to be one or that's not ready because they're going to be a shitty parent. They're mm-hmm. going to raise shitty fucking kids. Right. So, I ain't going to spend too much time on that shit, but I thought that was funny, goddamn it. So, a, a woman, um, she she said that she knows this bill isn't going to get passed, but I guess just to be a dickhead, um, because she said that men shouldn't try to control women's bodies. She's trying to pass a bill in Texas that says it would fine men a hundred dollars every time they masturbate. Now my thing is, how are you gonna know motherfuckers who's over there beating they meat and shit? Exactly. Like, like how could you possibly enforce that? You know, like nobody's gonna tell you, you know, like and and public masturbation is already a no, so exactly. it's not like you can just walk around and be like, hey, I see you. <laughs> right. She, she said it's, she says it's everybody's worried about, like, protecting precious life. When men masturbate, they're, <laughs> they're killing babies, too. That was, that was her whole point. So, I don't, I think she's dumb for that. I thought that was funny. Like, I don't. And uh, I don't know what. And <laughs> niggas is gonna be broke as hell. They gotta pay. Them. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Um, we back. Um, this is the Smokers Lounge Four Point Podcast. God damn it! I am Mr. Styles. And I'm K Dub. God damn it! And we're, and we're rocking now. You know this is this is episode number twenty three. God damn it! Um, let's see. I guess it's time to get into um real nigga sports. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is real sports with Mr. Styles and K Dub and this bitch. God damn it. So um, if you if you haven't been, if you haven't been watching the playoffs, um, the Blazers are playing the Warriors. If you know to think about that, you know there's two Currys. Steph and Seth Curry. So, um, both their parents always come to come to their games and shit, goddammit. So I guess since both of their teams both of their sons are playing, what they did was they had to flip a coin to decide which um parent was gonna wear which jersey and shit. I mean, I thought that was a cool way to do it. I thought it was cute. I mean, I thought their jerseys were super dope. Yeah, I mean, um and then the second day they, they wore like these um like split jerseys with like Portland in the front, GS in the back. Like I thought that was fucking dope and shit. Now my thing is you gotta root for somebody. So obviously we're not your parents, but Steph already got three of them things. So do you think you're rooting for Seth so he can get one, or you think they're you think they don't care as long as one of your sons get a trophy, or they want to see uh, Seth get one? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I can't say. I mean, I don't think that their mom probably is trying to choose a side. I mean...